Hey there, my fellow intellectuals, Dr. Kyle here with another video. And tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to review a concept that I haven't reviewed in almost a decade. You see, I was reading my book here, Computational Physics by Mark Newman, and I was in chapter six and I found the section on Newton's method. Now Newton's method is something I learned when I took a numerical analysis class almost 10 years ago in college. And I thought I understood it quite well back then. But as the saying goes, if you don't use it, you lose it. And I lost it. And so what I thought what might be fun is to relearn Newton's method and then make a video explaining what it is and demonstrating how you actually use it in practice. So if you watch this video, you're not only just going to get the sort of mathematical background to Newton's method and sort of the theory behind it, you'll actually get some practice implementing it in Python. So that sounds a lot of fun. Why don't we just get started? So Newton's method is a root finding method. It's a numerical approach that is used to find the zeros of a real valued function. So when the function f is evaluated at x subscript i, there could be multiple roots, this function will be equal to zero. And not only that, it's an iterative approach, as in your guesses for what the roots are are going to depend on what your previous guesses are. So you start with some initial guess, your n equals one guess, and then your n equals two guess will be dependent on your n equals one guess, but also the function evaluated at, at x of one and the derivative at x of one, right? And that just keeps going and going and going. Um, a visual look into what Newton's method is, is highlighted by this blue function and it's derivative in red at this particular point. So for example, the blue function is the function we want to find the root for. You can see it's zero right uh, here. And let's say you start at x of n. What you do is you evaluate what the function is at that point, and you also evaluate what the derivative of that function is at that point. And then you extrapolate the tangent line down to the x-axis, and that becomes your new guess. Now the difference between your nth guess and your nth plus one guess is known as delta x. And you can recall that the derivative is just the instantaneous slope, right? So what you can do here is you can rewrite the derivative as just the rise, which is just the function evaluated at that point, over the run, which is delta x. And this uh, iterative approach is going to try and converge onto that root, right? So you're trying to essentially converge to what the true answer is. So a little bit of the math here. This is going to involve a Taylor expansion. So we're gonna use a Taylor series, which is in an infinite term series. And for example, let's imagine we want to expand the function near a root. So X of subscript R is a root of the function. And by definition, the root of the function will make the function equal to zero, right? When you evaluate it at that point. And so what I wanna do is I want to eventually end up with an expression for the root of the function. So to get there, what I'm doing is that I'm expanding the function at some guess, we're just gonna call it X, and we are expanding it in this Taylor series, right? Which involves derivatives of the function. And I wanna isolate X of r or x subscript r. So I'm just going to subtract this term to the left side here. That's why the terms flip. And then I want to isolate x subscript r. So with some algebra here, you just derive, uh, divide, I should say, every term by the derivative here. And then you bring this single x to the other side. You can get expression for the root. Notice that the estimate of the root, which I've written in the parentheses here, is just the expression uh, that we have back here using uh, the iterative approach. So I've sort of separated the right-hand side into two terms here. We have the estimate of the root, and then we also have this error term. The error term actually has an infinite amount of terms because this is a Taylor series, but it is what is known as quadratic, as in the highest order term is a quadratic. And I'm not gonna get into the technical details of this, but essentially the error goes down quadratically or depends most on this uh, squared term right here, and all the other higher order derivative terms, uh, the, the error is going to be minuscule. And so 
Uh, Newton's method is, is said to have to have a quadratic convergence, so it converges really quickly, but there is no such thing as a perfect root finding method. So Newton's method requires that you know how to take a derivative of the function that you're interested in. So if you have a, an expression that is just unwieldy and complicated and you don't know how to take the derivative of, it may not be wise to use Newton's method for it. Um, okay, so with that being said, let's try and implement Newton's method and see how it's actually done in practice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the roots of the following six degree polynomial using Newton's method between the values x equals zero and x equals one. This polynomial is actually the sixth order Legendre polynomial that is just mapped to the interval between zero and one. And this is just from the book as an example. But I think it's a really cool illustrative example that when I solved the problem, I was very just uh, excited to see how Newton's method worked. So hopefully you'll find that same level of excitement when we do this problem together. Okay, I have my Jupyter notebook open. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to define the function here. It's a pretty long expression and because it's so long, I am just going to copy and paste in my other notebook over just because I don't want to have to type that all over again. Uh, and not only that, I'm going to write a function that defines its derivative as well. Thankfully, because this is a polynomial, we can just use the power rule, right? And so by using the power rule, we just bring down one power of x uh, in front of the, of the x and multiply it by the coefficient and then just subtract one power of x from each term, and that's uh, what we do here. So this is the derivative of that polynomial. Again, the power of Newton's method really is visible when you know what the derivative of the function you're interested in is. And uh, one thing that I'm gonna do to help us out is I'm actually going to visualize what this function looks like. So I'm going to um, plot this function between zero and one using 100 points. So just to give you an idea, right, we're just defining this uh, array of, of equally spaced points between zero and one, and then we're just gonna plot those points as well as the function uh, from those points. Oops, and I, don't, I did not define NumPy, so that's, that's uh, oops, let me define NumPy up here. Pi is at p, and I also didn't define matplotlib. That's that's an important thing. You should define your uh, dependencies at the very top, which I did not do, but there we go. Okay, so if we look at this, we can see that this function uh, does touch zero. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six times between zero and one. I guess that's why, because it's the six order polynomial, those under polynomial. Uh, and we have to somehow figure out what these what these roots are, okay? One thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna draw a uh, horizontal line along uh, the x equals zero, sorry, y equals zero point. Yeah, that was x, that's, that's y equals zero, sorry. I was like trying to make sure I said that correctly, but yeah, so horizontal line, um, just so I can better see where it's crossing the, uh, the zeros. Okay, so all right. Okay, so here is what I'm going to do. I, I'm just going to eyeball what these are because again, when you do Newton's method, you actually need to have a guess. You need to have some sort of initial guess of what your root is, but we want to find all of these roots. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to need to define six guesses and we're going to need to run Newton's method six times or you know have it converge six different times to find the roots of this function. So I'm gonna define the starting guesses of the roots based on the graph, okay? So what am I gonna do here? I'm gonna define an empty list and we're just going to try and eyeball these and just be like, okay, what's a value that we think this is close to? So this is, this is about 0 0.1, and this is like closer to 0, 0.0. So let's just say it's like 0 0.03 for that root. Uh, what about this one? This one is less than 0.2, it's greater than 0 0.1, maybe, I don't know, 0.16 perhaps. 
Uh, this one looks close to 0.4, but not quite. So we're going to say something like maybe 0.37. And again, I'm literally just looking at this graph and I'm just trying to assess what those zeros are just visually because we need to have a good starting guess for Newton's method to converge. So I am in a way kind of cheating by looking at this function, but I still think it gets the power of Newton's method across when you see the results. Okay, so... Um, where was I? So I did 0.37. This looks like almost 0.6. So I'm just going to say 0.6, even though it's clearly not by a little bit. Um, then we're at, what do we have here? Uh, let's say 0.81. And last, uh, it's 0.9, 0.95. Why not? Okay, it doesn't really matter. We just want something that's reasonable. Um, and again, this is actually kind of uh, an interesting point uh, and it can highlight also a weakness of the Newton's method is that if you have multiple roots, but perhaps you only care about a certain one of them, then depending on your initial guess, you might converge to you know, an answer you were not expecting or were not hoping for, right? I'm not entirely sure of an application where that's the case, but um, that's one potential drawback, right? Where maybe you make a guess here and you really want to find this route, but you're going to find that route instead. Um, so just uh, just something worth thinking about. So we're going to define the accuracy of our solution um, to be within, let's say, 10 decimal places. Okay, so we want the accuracy or the tolerance to be about uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 10. Okay. And now what are we going to do? So we need to somehow use Newton's method to find and validate uh, the roots, okay? So uh, let's do this. Let's define, let's say, let's create a combined for and while loop that finds the roots, the roots of this function. Okay, so first I'm just gonna define a, a, a list called roots. That's just gonna hold the, the roots that we find. And uh, let's say, let's write the for loop here for x guess in x naught, right? So each of these values um, is a guess. We're just going to say x is equal to x guess. And we're going to define this variable called delta. Okay, what, what is delta? Delta is going to be the ratio of p of x over d p d x, right? Because this um, is the term when you think about the uh, the guess for our root. We do the previous guess, like x of n, subtract p of x of n divided by the derivative of p of x evaluated at x of n. Okay, so. Um, we need this term and we're going to use a while loop that will effectively uh, essen it'll essentially keep Newton's method running as long as our delta is higher than our accuracy. So what I'm saying here is while delta is greater than accuracy or the absolute value of delta is greater than accuracy, um, we're going to set delta is equal to p of x divided by dp dx of x, right? That's what I defined the function as. Yes. And uh, we're going to say x is equal to x minus delta, right? So this, again, this is our guess for the root. And we just want this to keep going as long as this condition is true. So as long as this condition is true, as long as delta is uh, greater than you know, 1 e to the minus 10, this is just going to keep iterating. But at the end of that while loop, we want to append the the root, uh, the final answer, right? So this is the, going to be the final uh, value of x, the final guess, once the tolerance has been uh, achieved, right? So once we get down to an accuracy of, of this much, then the, the this value of x will be appended to our roots list up there. Okay, and then uh, what we're going to do here, I'll just say print the roots for this polynomial are roots. Okay, so I think that will work. But again, we are just going to use this iterative approach. We're evaluating the function and its derivative, 
at each guess and we're just doing this iteration and we're going to store the final answer after each iteration. We're going to go through each of these guesses to find the different um, zeros of this function. Okay, so we're going to run this. All right, so we ha have here reach those polynomial 0 0.0337, 0 0.169. Right, we're not just getting the same thing we put in. You have to be careful. Sometimes when you're evaluating this, sometimes you might just see that you didn't you didn't actually move anywhere in the parameter space. So let's see here. 693806.6. Okay. Yeah, this seems reasonable. We did move uh, a bit. And um, one thing that I'm going to do here, just to sort of visually inspect this, I'm going to um, plot this again. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for r in roots uh, PLTX V line, we're just going to draw a line. Uh, wherever those roots were just to see do they actually um, do they actually make sense do, do they line up with the zeros of the function graphically okay I think that should do it um, okay let's run that okay wow look at that let me let me change the line width to maybe one for more clarity and yeah that that looks really good actually um, if I could zoom in here yeah that looks pretty spot on right where, where we're crossing the um, the zero right so pretty cool pretty cool I think what actually might be pretty cool is actually why don't we plot where our um, our initial guesses were and uh, let's see, r in roots. Uh, let's see, for r in roots, do that. How about then we'll also plot just for x in x naught plt dot x v line x, and then let's change this from dotted to maybe dash dot and color maybe red, and let's just see what we get. Okay, yeah, so yeah, we did move, right? So the red is our initial guess. The black was where the Newton's method converged. And yeah, you can see we, we were actually pretty good with our guesses. We didn't have to move that much. But let's see, what if we actually just tuned this a little bit? What if I actually changed, you know, maybe let's change the last one. This was the first one. This was a really good guess because we were literally just you know, a sliver away. So what if I was a little bit farther off? Like what if I said instead of 0.03, what if I said 0.01? Does it still find that root? It does still find 0.03. And then if I plot this, that should move this over a bit. And it does. Pretty good. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the results here. So um, I hope that this video was uh, helpful in helping you understand what Newton's method does and uh, how it could be used for in finding roots. And uh, I hope you had fun following along with the, the presentation as well as the Jupyter Notebook session of this video. Uh, I had a lot of fun making this video. And if you like the format of this kind of relearning, presenting, and then applying the method type of video, please leave a comment below, like and subscribe if you'd want to see more stuff like this because I really enjoyed making this uh, entire video because it, it was just a fun way to relearn something and share it with you all. So with that, I think that is all that needs to be said. Uh, please leave any comments if you have any questions and keep your eyes open for more videos that I'll have in the future. Have a good night, everyone.